Hey guys, it's Strategy Gaming Dojo here, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And what do I have here in front of you? It is Emperor Rome, and today, you see right down here, version 2.0, the 2.0 Marius Edition came out. Now this is essentially a complete reworking, revamping of this game. This game was highly anticipated when it was going to come out, and then it met kind of with a thud with critics and players. Why is that exactly? Well, you know, Paradox has set a high bar for grand strategy games, and people were expecting the best of Crusader Kings 2 and EU4 all married up into a nice Roman package, and they did not get the best, <laughs> I don't think, of those two games, those two beloved games. They kind of maybe got the worst, and you know, Paradox just misfired a little bit, and they don't often do that. Now, sometimes their games come out, they won't feel complete, but as they add more and more, the game just keeps getting better and better. But the core base is there to make a great game. A lot of people did not feel like that was the case with Imperator, and so Paradox has a lot of money. They've got a lot of talent in-house to go and try to fix a game. So they have tried to revamp Imperator Rome, make it a flagship title. That's what they want, of course, is to be able to create, crank out DLCs for this, to have people modding it, to people have people really like the base and the bones of the game. And they didn't have that. And so now they're going to try to do that. I have not even played this at all. Uh, I did play about 10 hours of the original drop. I didn't necessarily like it uh, and I should be their target audience I love grand strategy games and I'm obsessed with Roman history and so I should be the person they are selling this game to uh, but I found that it was too many uh, ingredients in the soup there was just a lot going on that didn't feel like it affected other things. It felt like three or four games kind of at once that didn't necessarily all fit together. Uh, I thought there were, it was kind of confusing. I like really complicated games, as you know from the channel, uh, but this wasn't complicated in a good way. This was more complicated for reasons unknown, uh, and I just wasn't enjoying it, to be honest with you. So. I want this game to be great, all right? So I do not have any DLC running. I did not get the Greek DLC key yet uh, that also dropped with this, but it doesn't really affect anything. The big changes, that's just additive. The big changes are to the base game itself, and that is this 2.0 Marius update. So I'm going to go through and learn the game because I want the game to be good. I want to enjoy it. I want to you know, play it a lot. Uh, as I said, it's right up my alley. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go through and do the tutorial. And I thought, why not do it with you? Maybe you don't want to do the tutorial. Maybe you don't want to read the rule book. Uh, maybe you just like it when I play through things and we can talk it through or why certain things exist. So I thought, let's just play the tutorial. If you guys like it, if you want more of this game, I'll play more of it, of course. Uh, if you don't, well, Hell, you can watch me play the tutorial. <laughs> so we are going to go through the tutorial soup to nuts, top to bottom, side to side, east to west, whatever you want to call it. We are going to do this tutorial and figure out if we now are really going to enjoy Imperator Rome or if we're going to have to go back to other games like Field of Glory Empires, uh, which I'm currently playing right now. And I think uh, maybe did things a little better for this time period anyway in grand strategy so far. But let's see what happens. Uh, here we are, tutorial. Uh, I, I'm as fresh to this as you are, so let's see what is going on here. Uh, welcome to the tutorial for Imperator Rome. By completing the series of objectives, which you will find at the top right side of your screen, we'll introduce you to the basic principles. All right. The button on the top right bar of your screen embossed with a wreath and a spear will allow you to open and close the tutorial objectives. That looks like a wreath and a spear to me. You will be able to complete objectives in any order. However, if you are new to Paradox titles or want to refresh, we recommend that you follow them top to bottom. We will do that. Uh, holding your mouse over objectives will give us hints on how to fulfill the conditions. When the conditions are met, 
the objectives will be highlighted. All right, Roma Invicta. And then this kind of gives us a little history, it seems. Senatus Populusque Romanus. Or Romanus. Um, for over 20 years, the nascent Robert Republic fought a harsh campaign against the Samnite people to the south. Although victory often seemed far from grasp, the war ended in Rome's favor, resulting in the liberation of Neapolis, which is a Greek city-state, by the way. The Samnites, however, have retreated to lick their wounds, and they are far from defeated, so we will have to deal with the Samnites. In the north, the Etruscan people eye the expansion of the Roman Republic with apprehension. And to the south, myriad Greek city-states plot behind one another's backs, all the while appealing to their benefactors in Greece for aid. On the far-flung island of Sicily, the foreign invasion of the mysterious Carthaginians, maybe you've heard of them, uh, threatens to upset the precarious balance. Will Rome rise victorious? Well, it seems it all rests in our hands. And you can see some portraits here. This game, uh, I think maybe not as well as they would have liked originally, and I think also in this update, is trying to, you know, to kind of take some of the role-playing aspects from CK3. I don't think they're going as full bore into it, uh, at least not originally in the game, and everything I've read about this update, that would be true as well. It is a part of the game. It's not the game, like in CK3, really, uh, you know, I, I do believe you have a dynasty and you want your dynasty to do better, of course, and, you know, you will be following people down in your dynasty. Uh, but I don't think it quite goes into the role playing aspects that you get in CK3. Uh, anyway, for the Republic, the starting situation. Uh, during our tutorial, we'll be playing as Rome. The current date, which you can find in the top right-hand corner of the screen, is 1st October 450 AUC, or 450 years after the founding of Rome. I believe Rome was founded 732 BC. I just wish they would just make it BC. Uh, to me, this just seems like being fancy for no reason. You could even be, you know, before Common Era, after Common Era, if you don't want it to be a religious thing. That's fine with me. Uh, but nobody really knows what 450 ab urbe condita means. So, you know, you can do the math if you want. Rome has recently established local dominance and the stage is set for your expansion. Excellent. For the purposes of this tutorial, we've taken care of a few matters for you. We will, however, teach you how to cover those areas. Okay, uh, proceed. Along the top bar are the main resources you will accrue or spend over the course of your game. We recommend that you spend a moment getting acquainted with, with these. By holding your mouse over them, you'll be able to see tool tips detailing some of their effects and uses. Um, they've given us a bonus to the treasury and influence. All right, onwards. Okay, we'll take their uh, advice and go up here. So we have a nation overview. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this now. We're going to go through the tutorial. Hopefully, they'll tell us what some of these things are. But it looks, you know, like it just kind of tells us what we're commanding, what we're the, you know, our peoples are, uh, how many, the power base, I don't know, how many freemen, citizens. These look like your pops, all the pops you have, your culture maybe. Uh, we have some decisions down here. Administration, we have governorships, we have provinces. Okay. Uh, hopefully they'll tell us more about that as we go through here. Looks like we have, you know, different things that go on with our culture, maybe some ideas. Again, hopefully they'll tell us about all these. Uh, we have a treasury that has gold, just like all other Paradox games. It looks like it tells us exactly what is going into our monthly increase or decrease. So uh, we can look into those later. Then we have manpower, all right? So money and manpower, you've got that in pretty much every strategy, grand strategy game. Then we have political influence. Now, one thing I'm noticing over here, this bar is filling up. So they're doing the tooltips like they did in CK3. So that fills up and it locks it. So then you can go down into this tooltip. And if there were any, we could go on to another tooltip and so on and so forth. Uh, it, I'm actually surprised these aren't linked out to other tooltips that tell you what these things 
are, what they mean, what they do. Uh, that's one thing I really liked about CK3 and why I think it was so welcoming for new Paradox players. But it doesn't look like... Let's go over here. Okay, so it does have more tooltips within tooltips. Uh, I think that maybe they should have not done it in just bold white because it makes it kind of hard to find. Uh Okay, so here's, you know, more tool tips on these things. I kind of wish they would have done the, the extended tool tips, maybe in this blue color or something. Uh, I can put that in the suggestion box. I think that would be easier. Uh, military experience, all right. Oh, let's go back to political influence for a while. If you haven't played uh, Paradox games or other grand strategy games, this is used just like a currency. Uh, it's like gold, except you use it for influence, okay? Uh, and this tells you what makes up our balance. Now, in Paradox games, this is always what you're gaining or losing each month in these items. Uh, or that's generally how it is. I assume it is in this game. Uh, military experience, uh, stability, all right? So we're going to have to keep our empire stable. We're going to have to make sure that uh, our people are not... Uh, thinking to, about revolting, we'll have those kind of political considerations. Then we have aggressive expansion and war exhaustion. Okay, these two things. Uh, I like when games, grand strategy games, have these sorts of items because it keeps it from being strictly a paint-the-map affair. Uh, and when I say paint-the-map, if you don't know what that means, uh, a lot earlier grand strategy games you know years ago and maybe even some now uh we're just you know you build up the biggest army and you go around and you take over things well that can get very repetitive and boring after a while and so what these two things are doing are, are trying to limit you just painting the map with your color and instead making you uh, have to take into account how fast you're expanding and the people within your empire, you know, if they have different cultures, they're from different areas, uh, it just makes more of a challenge. I always like it. Then we have tyranny. Okay, I would assume this is going to be decision, certain decisions that we make. Uh, it may cause our people to think we're a tyrant. It may cause other peoples to think we're a tyrant. So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, support in the Senate. Okay, this is a very Roman thing where you may or may not have to get the Senate to approve certain things that you do. Uh, and I guess that your relationship with the Senate could be important or will be important, obviously. If this is up on the top bar, it will become important. All right. What do we have over here? Well, we have score. So we'll see how we're doing, I, I assume, compared to other empires or regions, provinces. Uh, we're at 363. I have no idea if that's good, bad, or otherwise. Uh, ledger. Oh, okay, cool. I always like when we have a ledger. Uh, I'm a database person, so you can go in here and look at data, your database. It looks like you can sort. Can we sort this? Yeah, we can sort it, although nobody has any war exhaustion now. Oh, okay. So sort by their opinion of us. Well, that's good that Rome has a good opinion of us. All right. Good to know. Uh, rulers. Uh, all right. So it looks like this is every ruler in the game. Interesting. So uh, some of these are quite a ways away from us. So it looks like there's no fog of war when it comes to that. We essentially know all of the stats. Eh, I like a fog of war, but you know, we'll see. I don't know. You know, I don't want to judge it, prejudge that. Uh, provinces, these I assume are our provinces, and that gives us various stats. Uh, cohorts, okay, so these are military units that uh, I assume we can raise or will be part of armies, maybe our army, maybe not, we'll see. Our rulers, uh, is this us? Publius Sempronius Sophus? Eh, maybe. Um, he is a consul, so this is our ruler right now. He is a consul. He's part of the Optimates party. The Optimates were uh, the aristocrats, really, of Rome. All right. Uh, he's got a seven martial skill. What is this? 
probably based on 10, right? His base is 7. Uh, finesse is 9. Charisma is 6. Now, can we go over here and see what... See, I don't like... I don't know why they're not tool tipping that. We should be able to roll over that and see exactly what charisma is. Uh, and it's not that difficult. Well, I say it's not that difficult. It may be difficult to program, but they've already got the programming because that is how CK3 works. You would just go here to charisma and it would tell us everything we need to know about charisma. Um, you know, it does have it down here at the bottom, I guess. Charisma is a character's ability to charm and persuade others. High charisma characters often have an advantage with interacting with... Okay, so it's diplomacy. Is it? Yeah, it's diplomacy. What is finesse? Let's... Why is it not telling us about finesse? Oh, okay. Well, it didn't tell us that there. Finesse represents a character's skill and disciplines requiring a high attention to detail. Oh, okay. So our guy has OCD. He's a nine. High finesse characters make excellent researchers and governors. All right, so I, I did complain prematurely, apologies. I guess this tells us what finesse is. Um, you know, I, I, I do wish they would just do it like CK3, which is the best tooltip system I've ever seen. That would also highlight or link to researchers, governors, uh, disciplines, you know, I mean, it would, literally link us out to everything in the game. Uh, Marshall, of course, ability to fight and lead troops. All right. And then what's zeal? Zeal is a character's ability to inspire faith in other characters and also in calling upon the favor, favor of the gods. Okay. Well, that's our ledger. We know a little bit more about our character. I just wanted to see that so we know who we're playing with. Uh, message log. All right. We've appointed Aulus Virginus to be our Tribunus Plebis. All right, so uh, in ancient Roman history, uh, the plebes, uh, it was appointed, they were appointed a tribune, and it looks like we were able to do that. What is this? Oh, we can go look at this guy. All right, excellent. He's been given the task of Tribunus Plebis. He is the Tribunus Plebis. He is a Roman minor character. Oh, look, okay, so we can go over him and look at all of his stats. All right, uh, what are some of these stats? A loyalty, popularity, corruption, statesmanship, how much wealth he has, his, per his uh, power base, age, and loyal cohorts. Okay, so he can have his own army, I guess. And then this tells us his title. All right, uh, very good. Um, so that's the message log. Now, if you've ever played a Paradox game before, you understand how the time works. We can set this to go faster or slower. Now, it's interesting that the tooltip goes right over being able to see the speed. We're going to put that on the slowest. I assume if we click on this, it starts. Uh, we're not going to do that. We could speed it up. Okay. Uh, looks like this is our main menu. Fine, we know how that works. Uh, just like every other Paradox game, you get an outliner. That outliner is generally going to tell you it looks like we have some navies here. Doesn't look like we have any armies. All right, uh, Great Wonders. I don't know what those are, but okay. Uh, and Cute Events. I don't know what those are either. So we're going to move this over to the side. We'll move the outliner out here. And we'll come back and look at it. Then it looks like we have different map modes. We can find a location, zoom to our capital. And our capital is Rome, of course. And it's got these kind of interesting looking, you know, white. Oh, okay. Well, that looks cool when you zoom down in here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. I, I like the look of that. Do, I wonder if you have different buildings. Like, is this the forum? Um, the city of Rome contains the Hellenic Temple of Jupiter. Can, and then it tells us again, the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus is a great work. Uh, fortifications here propagate a zone of control to neighboring territories. All right. I don't know what any of that means. Um its terrain is farmland. 
Okay. Uh, what's the terrain down here? Farmland. Is Does it change or is the whole region that? This is farmland, farmland. Okay, now we're into hills. Okay, so it's the whole region. It's not like CK3 where there's different, uh, in that game it's called baronies, but there's different parts of each uh, region. Here it's just the one thing. Now do these towns have, like if they have a different kind of wonder, does it look different? Uh, I'm not seeing that that's the case. All right, what is this over here? Oh, these are our two naval units. So if we look over here, we've got Classes 1, Classes 2. Looks like they both have five ships in them. Okay. Yeah, we see the two, two units, Classes 1, Classes 2, with a total of 10. All right, so we have a port. And it does tell us that. Mare Tyrinium. Uh, terrain is the coastal sea when we're talking about Ostia. Um, it's in the zone of control of the Fortress of Roma and also of Vei. Okay, uh, here's Vei. What does Vei have here? What's this nice looking building? Well, it's not going to tell us that. I guess. Oh, maybe it, Oh, okay. I guess it will. Let's actually click on here. And let's see what we got going on here. Relocate our capital, relocate, dedicate holy site. Uh, this is a pro, wow, it gives us a lot of information about this. Um, really nice summary. Okay, well, uh, I just wanted to look around the map a little bit. So that's zoom to capital, uh, configure preset map modes. Do we want to do, I don't want to mess with the map modes. Let's not do that. Region map mode, I assume that's what we're in right now. Uh, provinces, okay. Uh, Atlas, huh. I don't really know what that is or means. Maybe they'll tell us. Uh, political and cultural. Let's look at the cultural map. All right, you see most of the boot is going to be of our culture, which, you know, Roman, Latin, the Latin culture maybe. I don't know. It doesn't say. It didn't bring up a different name for all of this. But let's go back to regions. Oh, crap. Now I'm off. Wait a minute. Is this culture again? No. Political. Atlas. Provinces. Regions. Where is just our basic map mode? Where is that? Um, zoom back to our capital. Uh, maybe we are going to have to go configure these. Atlas map mode. We already saw that. Terrain. Oh, terrain, maybe. Okay, yeah, terrain. Do we have terrain up here? No. What do we do? Drag it over here? Ah, we do. Okay, let's just put that right there. That'll be our main map mode, I think. Terrain. Uh, sure. Does it show you? Hold on. Let's figure out. Can we do who controls what? Provinces, regions. That's what we just have up here. Simple terrain. What is simple terrain? Oh, it shows us in colors what each thing is. Okay, well, that's nice. I like that. Diplomacy, trade routes. Uh, okay. Fortification, civilization. No. Unrest. Holdings. Yeah, I don't like that color. What's... These are all of our holdings. Uh, weird. How do you just get back to... Can I click off of this and get off of that? Well, like I said, I'm learning the game with you. Okay, we're just going to stay here. It doesn't matter. Uh, we know where Rome is, right? Uh, let's start going through the tutorial. All right, stabilize Rome. How are we going to do this? Perform a divine sacrifice to increase stability. Open the religion window. Have we seen the religion window? I don't know. And click on perform divine sacrifice interaction. St stability trends towards 50. A stability value of less than this represents a nation getting closer to turmoil. Rome will gain a 10 stability if we do perform divine sacrifice. Now, I have not seen religion. Oh, I see here. So we have flags. Uh, this is much like, you know, every other Paradox game. This tells you different things you need to know or do, you need to do 
This is actually a prettier way of doing it. I like it. We'll get back to those. I'm assuming that religions over here, nation, government, economy, religion. All right. Now it says, it said for us to perform a divine sacrifice. Now, how do we do that? Uh, Mars, okay. Pantheon deities. These are deities. Replace this? No, I mean, we're, that's not what we're here to do. Uh, Mercury, Jupiter, Ceres. Okay, these are our different gods. But Mars does not have a site. Mercury does not. Jupiter does, but we knew that, right? Remember, we just read that. Um, tomb of Romulus. The Manilis of Stones and an empty altar. Okay. What is this? It's owned by Rome. All right. And then let's go to the holy sites. Roma, we have the Temple of Jupiter. Okay. And we have uh, the Temple of Diana is at Capua. All right. So this is our religion. What is this? This came, contains three treasures. Oh, I guess that's what these are here. Um, or it could have three. An additional two treasures can be found in owned provinces. Uh, okay. Ah, there's performed divine sacrifice. Well, they certainly don't make it, you know, like obvious. Um, maybe you guys already spotted it and said, dude, just click on uh, the knife going through the piggy. Perform a divine sacrifice until 1st October 455. This will give us a monthly stability change. Uh, divine sacrifice costs plus 65 of what? What is this? Uh, it's not clear to me what that costs, but okay. The proper ritual will cost 4350 of our political influence. Okay. This is because of these items. All right. We don't know much about this, but that's fine. Let's just hit perform divine sacrifice. And okay, let's hit play, see what happens. Going slowly here, I believe, did we, did we do it? Left click to mark as completed. Okay, congratulations, you have successfully stabilized Rome. As you play more, you will encounter a variety of modifiers and effects that alter your stability. The cost of increasing it and the effects from having it. Events will often affect your stability value. We have provided you with some extra stability as a reward. Oh, right, they said they were gonna give us a plus 10 uh, to our stability. Uh, stability's here, so it hasn't shown up yet. Events will often affect your stability value. Excellent. Oh, there it did. It just popped up. Stability increased. My console, our stability has increased. This is due to your last action. Okay, let's uh, go back and pause here for a minute. So we did that. We figured out where religion is here. It was not entirely clear that we would go right there. What is this? Religious unity, omen power. Again, we don't really know. Oh, okay. Here are five different uh, items in the relo religi uh, I can't even say it. Reliquary. Okay. Sibylline books, uh, Trojan Palladium, Statue of Apula, Tomb of Romulus. We have both of these in Rome. These must be elsewhere. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we know a little bit more about religion. Let's go back up here and say invoke a deity. Deities are important features in Imperator Rome. Open the religion window to browse the deities of the Roman pantheon. Each country has four deity slots, war, culture, economy, and fertility. The deities, <laughs> deities, the deities in these slots each provide a passive bonus to the country and can be changed to obtain different bonuses for a cost. Invoking a deity provides a temporary extra bonus known as an omen which is applied in addition to the passive bonuses each deity provides. It is important to note that only one omen may be active at once and that an omen may not be revoked once it is chosen. It, ex it has to expire before a new one can be picked. Okay, we recommend that you invoke Mars for the per- oh shit, for the purposes of this tutorial, but feel free to try out something different. 
Uh, okay, reward Rome gets 100 political influence. All right, so we're going to go back over here to religion. Now, how do we invoke this? Invoke? Uh, no. Uh, here's Mars. This is what they want us to invoke. Replace this. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, Jewish Hellenic? Oh, I see. This gives us kind of a breakdown if there are other religions in our um, in our empire. Holy sites? No. Pantheon deities. Well, it's got to be on Mars here. Oh, I see. Well, okay, you just click on this. Now, that was not apparent. Uh, I just clicked on that, and it says, Calling on Mars will grant us a plus 6, 31% discipline. No other omens may be called for five years. Are you sure? Well, that's what you told me to do. So, okay. All right. Uh, let's hit play. And let's go up here and go to this and say, yes, we have done that. We have invoked a deity. It's odd that we have to go check this, right? Um, the gods have truly blessed us. Now Rome is ready for war. We recommend that you check out the other omens to get an idea of what else you could use in times of need. All right, let's pause that. Uh, religion. This is the deity of the economy, is Mercury. Jupiter is culture. And Ceres is fertility. All right. Well, I guess if we want to get our pops up, we'll bring in Ceres. Uh, Mars gives us morale of armies, a plus three. And now these are the passive ones, I believe. Oh, I see. Okay. So the one on top, you always get just for having them in these slots. Uh, it says we can replace. Oh, this deity's okay. Let's try to replace Mercury. Who else could we bring in here uh, to be our deity of the economy? Uh, we could bring in Pluto, who gives us building costs of negative 5% and ups our tax rate if we call it into Omen. Okay, I get it. So you have four gods. Each one <clears throat> has what they call a passive bonus that it gives you. Um, for just being in this slot. Now you can replace it if you like somebody else's passive bonus. Uh, we're not gonna get into all that. But then if you call this one specifically, at any time you can call one of the four, and it looks like you would always have one called, I don't see why you wouldn't, it gives you a second bonus. All right, so that's religion. Um, that makes some sense. And so we're gonna up our military to start with. Uh, having Mars already gives us a plus three of the morale. This, what we just chose by calling Mars gives us a plus 6.31% to discipline. Okay. Um, if we would have picked Mercury to invoke, we would have gotten more income. If we would have picked Jupiter, we would have gotten more expansion or it would have cost us less uh, aggressive expansion cost. And then if we would have called Ceres, we would have gotten this food modifier. So as it is, these are the passive ones they always give us. Depending on who we invoke, we get the second one. Okay, that's religion. I, I think that really I can probably safely say that's the important part of religion in this game. Uh, since those were the first two tool, uh, tool things of the, uh, of the tutorial. Okay, so we have two you know, items here. Oh shit, we could read a lot more about that if we wanted to. Uh, we're not going to for these purposes. All right, we're still paused. What's the third thing? Build port and Cap uh, Capua. We will do that next time. I wanna try to keep these at like 30 minutes. I don't wanna bore the hell out of you now. I know if you wanna jump in and play the game, you're like, keep going. I will turn out a second episode of this very quickly and a third, and we will go through all of this tutorial. Uh, but I don't want this to be like an hour or two hours long. So I'm going to call it quits for this time. Uh, I'll get episode two up very quickly, though, as we continue to explore Emperor Rome, the Marius update 2.0.
Thanks for dropping by, guys. This is Strategy Gaming Do Dojo. I will talk to you next time.